Welcome once again to my kitchen here at Trails N62. Alright, today we're going to be doing French fries. That's right, French fries pressure can. Now, I'm going to be doing these potatoes a little different than what you normally see potatoes done. These are going to be raw dry packed, which means they're raw potatoes, French fried, dry packed in the pressure can. I know that's not USDA approved or anything like that. This is rebel canning as they say. So, but I've researched this and it looks like it's going to work out all right. So we're going to try this in my uh, Nesco electric canner. So we're just going to do five uh, pints and I'm going to use wide mouth pints because the potatoes come out easier. So we're going to try this and see how it works and just see what happens. Come along with me for the journey. Alright, here's my potatoes. They're already washed, peeled, and french fried. So I have them soaking right here in a uh, lemon ice water. That's how I do it. It helps remove the starch. I'll rinse these a couple more times. Kind of helps get the starch out of them. And we'll can them. And this is my little handy dandy french fryer here that I just got not too long ago. And it comes with two uh, blades and two pusher deals that you push through the blades. This happens to be the smaller one. Uh, I like the smaller french fries rather than the big fries. And we'll be canning them in my Nesco electric pressure canner in wide mouth pint jars. So, I'm going to let these soak for a little while and help get the starch out. I'll rinse them a couple of times and then we'll be ready to go on with the canning. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I've let my fries soak in lemon ice water for a little while. Now that's twofold purpose. First of all, it keeps the potatoes from browning. And then it also helps take out some of the starch with the ice water. And then I rinse them. And I'll rinse them a couple times, let them drain for a little bit. Get them more dried off. Because I am raw dry packing. So there won't be any water in here. Okay, we're rinsed off now. ready to put them in the jar. Put these in these wide mouth jars and leave one inch head space. pack these in here and we'll see what we'll get after five quarts. I may put a little bit more in after I get to five quarts. Or, excuse me, five pints. Okay, now we're going to put our jars in the canner. We're going to put a little splash of vinegar in there for the hard water. Put our jars in there. Now, I want to make sure you understand. You need to make sure that you follow the recipe, the instructions for your particular canner. Because some canners are different than others. Okay, this one says it fits five wide mouth and it barely fits them. Okay. Next it calls for adding the water. Now, generally I put the water in my canners before I put the jars in, but the instructions say add the water after you put the cans in, so that's what we're going to do. And it calls for eight cups of hot water. 
I don't like this method of putting it in after the jars are in because you get water all over the lids of your jars. Now, we've got our jars in, we've got our water in, we've got our vinegar in. We're ready to go. We're going to close our lid. We've checked our lid. We've checked our outlets. Make sure they're all clear and working properly. Seals good. All that kind of good stuff you need to do to check your canner before you start. I'm going to check and make sure this is on exhaust. I plugged it in. Lock it down. And now it's ready to set the timer. So I set my timer. First I put it on high because I'm pressure canning. I set my timer for 35 minutes. Because that's how long you do pints of potatoes. Quarts of potatoes are done at 40 minutes. I have a 15 pound pressure weight on top because green in this case is 15 pounds, the black is 10 pounds. I have 15 pounds on top because of my elevation. Ready to go and I punch start. Now that will heat up the canner and then it will get to the when it's the proper heat and the pressure's built up in there it will start the 10 minute timer and it will do the 10 minute vent and then it will beep again and I'll come in and close the weight up top. I'll move this over to airtight which will seal it and of course steam will still come out. Steam always comes out because that regulates the pressure but that will seal it down to that pressure amount that weight and then it will run for the time period then it'll be done. We'll see how those french fries work out. And there we have it. Five pints of french fries. Can. That way they don't take up freezer space. And I can just open the can and heat it up. It's already cooked. I can stick it. I think I can just put it in my uh, air fryer. Spritz it with a little oil. Put it in the air fryer. And I think it'll work fine. Or drop them in the deep fryer. And, and uh, fry them up a little bit. Brown them. Either way. They won't take as long as uncooked potatoes. And they're ready to go. And they won't take up my freezer space. Alright. I'm ready to give my jar fries a try here. I'm going to have these with some steak tonight. And so we're going to try these in my air fryer. I have a new air fryer. It's different than my other ones. Let me show you what I've got. So this is my regular air fryer. Uh, I have two round ones like this. One of them is an older one. And then I have this one here. I'm going to cook my steak in this one. And then let's move over here. This is my new air fryer. I got this one because I can cook multiple things in it. It's got, it's got an interior. It's got some wire shelves. It's got shelves that go in there. It can slide in at different levels. Also has a basket, but the most unique thing about it that I like is this little button right here. This is a rotisserie. A rotisserie for cooking French fries. It's got a little shelf in there that turns it, the fries, and it sticks in there in a slot sticks there in a slot like that your fries are in it and then once you start it see it's starting to turn there and so it'll turn the fries so you don't have to flip them and I find that's been really good for making my fries all right so I'm going to sp spritz the fries a little bit with some oil and then I'll Put them in there and, and see how they do. Alright, I've got a little oil.
sprayer here it's a it's a pump pump it up and I'll spritz these fries with a little oil and so they are cooked and so they are going to be just a little bit tender so you have to be a little careful with them normally when I do my fries I do them in my air fryer at 400 degrees for depending on the amount of fries anywhere from 11 to, to 14 minutes But that is from frozen. And since these are already cooked, they're not frozen. My thinking is that they probably shouldn't take over five to seven minutes. Spritz them with a little oil. Gently flip them around here a little bit. So they'll coat better with the oil. Spritz them again. Just a light coating and that kind of helps brown them. Okay, I put my fries in my basket. Gently put them in there, as you can see. And then I'm going to close the lid. I have preheated the air fryer. 400 degrees for 3 minutes. And now I'm going to put my rotisserie in the air fryer. Stick this in there. Put it in the slot. There it's ready to go. It's preheated at 400 degrees for three minutes. Now we're going to close it. And 400 degrees. I'm probably going to do it. Let's try seven minutes and see how that works. Start my rotisserie and then start it. We can always do it longer if we need to. Turn my light on in there. You see it turning around. All right. All right, here we are. I'll try one of these here. They look good. They taste all right. Not as crunchy as I like. I probably should have. Uh, Towed them off a little bit. They were still a little moist, and then uh, sprayed them with the oil more evenly, and they might have done better. I did check these against the other fries that I that I do frozen, and uh, they're a little bigger, so they took a little longer than the seven minutes. And probably putting these in oil and deep frying them will make them more crunchier, but they still taste good. It was an experiment. I like them. Mmm. Okay. And there you have it. Jar fries. Uh, like I said, I probably should have uh, spread them out a little better and, and sprayed them more evenly with the oil. It probably would have helped them be crunchier. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to work them in the air fryer to be as good as I like. I may have to drop them in a deep fryer and put a nice crisp on them. So, but otherwise, they tasted good. It worked out good. Uh, just the right amount for me to have, so I'm going to have some fries with my steak and some pinto beans that I canned back in uh, 2019. So, that's it for canning french fries. From my kitchen to yours, God bless.